The newly redesigned Robot Inventor Color Sensor is smaller, lighter, and more powerful than ever before. And in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to make the most of this amazing sensor. So don't go anywhere. What is up everyone? It's your boy Kyle here again, broadcasting to the Builder Dude Nation with yet another exciting Mindstorms tutorial. So the Lego Mindstorms Robot Inventor, as you guys all know, brought along with it two new exciting sensors. The most exciting of which arguably is the new color sensor. Compared to the EV3 color sensor, the new Robot Inventor color sensor is about half the size. It has the same square footprint, but it is half the length. And in my opinion, it offers a much better, more improved form factor that offer a whole bunch more mounting options than the EV3 sensor did. So what that means is right off the bat, just by looking at the exterior, you can see that the newly redesigned Robot Inventor sensor is going to be a lot easier to use in your robotics projects. Another important difference to note is that the EV3 sensor, the original one, used two separate bulbs for detecting reflected light and color, whereas the newly designed color sensor has the single detector bulb surrounded by an LED ring light. And the LED ring light has a little bit of a diffuser pattern, which will help the light diffuse and ultimately helps the light that is emitted from the sensor bounce back into the detector more accurately and ultimately give you a more accurate reading of reflected light intensity. But if you're watching this video today, you probably want to know how to program this sensor as well. I think now's as good of a segue as any to jump into launching the app and showing you how to use the sensor with the new app experience. So I have my smart device with the Mindstorms app loaded and ready to go. I have a color sensor connected to port D of my robot, but really any port will be fine. And the intelligent hub is already connected via Bluetooth to my smart device. Now, if you need help setting up any of that, I recommend go check out my video from a previous week where I show you how to set up the connection and troubleshoot it and all that great things. But now assuming that everything is connected and ready to go, the first thing you wanna do is just test out the sensor and see what kind of values it is reading. So with the app experience open, click in the top right corner where you see the brick icon and it will give you a port view of all of the sensors and motors that are connected to your intelligent hub. It shows you the current reading of every attached piece of hardware. What we're interested in today, of course, is the color sensor. Now that is in port D of my robot. Again, it really, it will work in any port. And you can see it's readout in the bottom right corner. Right now I'm holding up the sensor in the air, which means it can't see anything. And that's indicated by the negative one value that we see on the tablet screen. However, if I click on the sensor icon, it brings a little drop down menu and I can select the different modes that I want the sensor to operate in. By default, it's in detected color setting, which is what it is now. So I'll just click that again to keep it in color setting. So seeing as this is the color sensor, let's give our sensor a colorful object to look at to verify that it's working. And for this test, I'm going to be using my bright red Miata plushie. When we put the color sensor up to the Miata, and we can see it detects the red color, which is, you know, exactly what we would expect. Now, of course, that's the simple color mode. But if you notice at the bottom of this drop down menu here, there are three more options that are color related. You see red, green, and blue. And what these are is these are raw sensor intensity values for each of these three colors. Now, if you didn't know, red, green, and blue are the three primary fundamental colors for optics. So the human eye has three color receptors, red, green, and blue. And that's why LED TVs are able to make every color imaginable with just three colors in their pixels, red, green, and blue. And that's exactly the principle behind how this sensor works. It can't detect colors like yellow directly, but instead it measures the relative intensities of red, green, and blue, each of those. And if there's a high intensity to both red and green, for example, it knows that color is yellow. So let's try out these raw sensor values on the Miata plushie. So I clicked on red, and this is showing us the intensity of red light only. And as you would expect, if you take the sensor and put it up against a bright red object like this, you're going to see a very high reflected light intensity value for just the color red. And it's important to note that these values scale from zero, which is no light at all, 
all the way up to 255. And it's out of 255 because it's a raw sensor value. These red, green, and blue light intensities are lower level as we would call them. So they're closer to the guts of the machine or how the actual robot inventor itself interprets colors. Now I've gone and selected green. And as you would expect, if you take the color sensor and put it up to a bright red object, the reflected light intensity for green light is much lower than it was for red. It's not exactly zero because there's always going to be a little bit of green light and a little bit of blue light even in really red objects in the real world. And again, just as one more sanity check, here is the light intensity for blue light. Again, much lower than it was for red. And that makes sense because we're pointing the color sensor at a red object. Now there's one more mode of the color sensor that I want to talk about. And this is arguably the most useful mode, especially if you're building a competition robot for FLL or WRO, for example. So back in the port view menu, again, we'll click on the color sensor and we will choose reflect, which is short for reflected light intensity. And what this does is it gets the sensor to emit that white LED light and then look at what percentage of the light it emitted is reflected back. And this is great because it can tell you roughly how light or how dark the surface that the sensor is looking at is. So a dark surface will reflect less light and you'll get a lower percentage of reflected light intensity, therefore a lower reading on the sensor. And then a lighter surface, again, is a higher reflected light intensity. And this is read as a percentage from 0 to 100%. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use my beloved Lego Mustang, which is a great example because it is a dark blue car with some nice bright white racing stripes. So if we go ahead and shine the sensor on the dark blue part of the car, we can see that the reflected light intensity value is relatively low. It's not super duper low though, because the surface itself is a little bit shiny. And that's something else you have to take into account is that shiny surfaces do tend to reflect a little bit more light, even if they are dark. However, by comparison, if we go ahead and move the sensor over to one of the white racing stripes, we can see that the reflected light intensity value is now much, much higher than it was before. And this is how competition robots built for FLL and WRO are able to attack lines and other designs on their competition mat when they have a sensor aimed downwards at the grounds. I have the Mindstorms app open and now I'm ready to walk you through a couple of examples of using the color sensor in the context of an actual program. So this first example I'm going to show you is how to use the color sensor in the context of an event. So let's say your robot is doing one thing and you want the robot to watch for some condition on the color sensor. When that condition is met, you want the robot to interrupt what it was doing before and do something else. So that's what we're doing right now. So first we want to say, what is the original thing that we want to do? In this toy example, we're just going to set the robot to start driving forward. So in the movement tab, I'm going to go ahead and choose set movement speed to 50% and then start moving um, in a straight line. So this is the first thing that our robot is going to do that we want to be interrupted when the color sensor meets a certain condition. So then we want to go into the events tab we're going to say when our color sensor sees the color red, this is the event that's going to interrupt what the robot's already doing and start the code on a new branch of execution. And make sure you select the correct port. So I have my color sensor in port F and you can choose any number of colors on here. Uh, I'm going to keep it the default red because I'll put a little red piece of tape on the ground. And then let's say when the color sensor sees red, we want the robot to stop in its track. So we'll say stop moving right here and we can even have it play a sound and light up. So let's say uh, we'll set the center light button to green and we will play a little sound. So uh, drag out a play sound. And this is one quick example of how to get the color sensor to interrupt on an event trigger. So let's see what this looks like. If that wasn't cool enough, there's actually another way we can get the color sensor to interrupt the flow of a program and get your robot to do something else. So let's say you want to actually use the reflected light intensity read by the color sensor to trigger an event. We're going to have to structure the code a little bit differently. And this is a great way to introduce us to using comparisons on sensor values. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we have a similar scenario as before. So we have the robot just starting off driving in a straight line and eventually we want it to stop moving, play a sound and light up. So if we want to interrupt this with reflected light intensity, what we can do is go into the control tab, click on wait until and drag that under here and then drag the rest of the code under that. Now in this hexagon shaped field, we can set a conditional on the color sensors reflected light intensity. So go into sensors and you're going to want the hexagon shaped block that reads the reflected light intensity. So it's this one. 
So if the color sensor in port F reads a reflected light intensity less, less than 50%, that is going to trigger the stop condition. So let's check out this code and see what it looks like in action. Now I'm gonna teach you how to use conditionals with the color sensor. So in this example, let's say the color red makes your robot really unhappy for some reason. You can see we have two little display blocks, one that turns on a smiley face and one that turns on a frowny face. And let's say we want the frowny face to turn on only when the robot sees the color red with its color sensor and it will be a smiley face in every other scenario. So for this, you're going to wanna to go into control and drag out an if else block. You can put that right here. This lets us define a conditional in the if statement. So this is another one of those hexagon shaped programming blocks. And if the if part of the condition is true, then it will execute that piece of code. So we'll draw a frowny face and otherwise, so that's the else clause, then we'll draw a smiley face. So let's fill in the sensor block for the if conditional. So go into sensors, and drag out this one. This is a hexagon shape that says, if the color sensor in port F is reading the color red. And again, you can change this to any other color you want. I'm gonna leave it on the default red and we can throw that into the condition here. So this is going to execute our conditional based on the color red. The one last thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to wrap this in an infinite loop just so we can continue going back and forth, switching the robot's face with the color over and over again. So let's test out this example. This last example is going to be slightly more advanced. Let's say you want to directly read data off of the sensor and have it control some part of your robot. So to directly read data off the sensor, uh, go into the sensors tab and then select one of these round kind of like oval shaped blocks. This works best in my opinion with reflected light, but you can also do it with color. So we'll say the color sensor in port F we want it to read the reflected light value. And that's what this block does, is wherever you place this block, it will read the numerical value on the sensor and plug it into the expression wherever it is. So for this example, let's say we want to use the reflected light intensity to power the motor. So when the reflected light intensity is 100%, we'll run the motor at 100%. If the reflected light intensity is 50%, we'll run the motor at 50%. So let's go ahead and code that up. So you're gonna want a infinite loop for this just to keep the sensor continuously updating. And we're going to need two motor blocks. So we're going to need one that sets the motor speed to some amount of power. And this is where we're going to plug in the sensor block. So that goes in right there. And that's basically saying the motor in whatever port this is, so I'll say port C, set its speed to the same value of the reflected light intensity. And then we're going to say for that motor, just start running that motor at that power and make sure these two ports match. So if you choose port C up top, make sure it also says port C on the bottom. And then we're actually just going to add a small weight to the end of this. So we're gonna say wait for one quarter of a second, 0.25 seconds. And that just gives you enough time to observe how fast the motor is spinning before it updates again. So again, what this code does is every quarter of a second, it's going to read the reflected light intensity percentage off of the color sensor, then set our motor in port C to rotate at that speed. So let's see what this looks like. You can use this piece of code to demonstrate to yourself an interesting property of the Robot Inventor color sensor. And that is the color sensor only detects its own light. So as you can see, I have the flashlight turned on on my phone and I'm shining it directly into the color sensor and it doesn't affect the reflected light intensity reading on the color sensor and the motor actually doesn't change its speed. And that's because this color sensor is tuned into the specific frequency of its own light, which helps prevent outside interference from other light sources. Thanks so much for stopping by to learn about the exciting new color sensor. I wanna know, what do you have planned with the color sensor? What kind of awesome robots do you want to build with it? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you really enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing because I do videos like this every week. Thanks guys and I'll see you next week.